The journey has been long and sometimes very difficult. Now the Lord comes to us in victory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. With great joy, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. The journey has been long, and we have desired to enter the holy city. You come into our hearts and our lives, humbly, patiently, encouraging us to learn and grow, to embark on journeys of hope and healing. Open our hearts today to hear your words as we sing praise to you. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. appreciate that because I hate carrying groceries. Do you guys help your moms carry groceries into the house when they get home? Sometimes. That's really nice. Sometimes I wish I had a donkey that could carry my groceries for me. <sighs> you know, because donkeys are really, really strong critters. Did you know that? The donkey carried Jesus into Jerusalem, and it was even a little donkey, a young donkey. It wasn't even a grown-up donkey. A whole man carried him into, G into Jerusalem. And the people, like we did this morning, were waving their palms and cheering and saying, Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, you know, the donkey, the legend says that because of the donkey's help with Jesus going into Jerusalem, that God put a cross on the donkey's back. Can you see that on that donkey in the picture? You were... Remember that? Yes, we had a live donkey one time at one of our nativities, didn't we? Yes, good job, Gus. So anyhow, this donkey carried Jesus in. The people who were so excited to see Jesus come in, by the end of the week, they were not very happy. 
And you know the story of the Passover dinner, the Last Supper, how Jesus and some of the disciples went to the garden to pray, how Judas betrayed Jesus and the soldiers took him away. They beat him and they whipped him and they just were so mean to him. And then the next morning he was tried and condemned to die on the cross. They had beaten him so badly that he was so weak. But the meanest thing those soldiers did to him was tell him that he had to carry his own cross. Can you imagine, if I think groceries are heavy, imagine if we had to carry a whole cross. Whew. Well, there was a guy that had come into Jerusalem, just happened to be there on business or for the Passover, happened to be on the street, and Jesus was struggling so much that the Roman soldiers grabbed him and said, you carry the cross. His name was Simon, and he came from a place called Cyrene, which is in northern Africa, and he just happened to be there. Now, we find out later on a little bit more about Cyrene and whether or not he was actually a believer in Jesus. We'll look at that story another time. But so Simon had to carry that cross. I'm sure that Jesus was so grateful. He felt so bad. And you know, I think our parents are really grateful when we help them carry the groceries in, aren't they? There are lots of kind things we can do like that to help with the burdens of other people. And the way Simon helped Jesus' burden, the way the donkey carried Jesus' burden into the city, we should carry each other's burdens too. So look for ways that you can help a friend or a family member, help them with their burdens. Let's pray. Almighty Father, thank you for people who share our burdens. Help us to be those people. Amen.
scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 23rd chapter, beginning with the 24th verse. Pilate issued his decision to grant their request. He released the one they asked for, who had been thrown into prison because of a riot and murder. But he handed Jesus over to their will. As they led Jesus away, they grabbed Simon, a man from Cyrene, who was coming in from the countryside. They put the cross on his back and made him carry it behind Jesus. A huge crowd of people followed Jesus, including women who were mourning and wailing for him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It has been so good to return to doing some things that we had to put a pause to during the pandemic. And we're beginning to do some things that bring joy and connection with one another into our lives. Things that we've been missing for a while. And one of those things that brought me great joy was securing a seat as a bystander at both the Lynchburg and Rustburg Christmas parades and watching both of my boys march in the Brookville band. David was one of the two drum majors and Luke was playing his clarinet as a seventh grader with the high school band. It was just wonderful being amongst those bystanders as I watched my boys march by, sharing the Christmas spirit with all the people lining the streets. Today, today is Palm Sunday, and we're remembering a different parade procession into Jerusalem. No marching bands, no decorated floats, no candy being thrown out into the crowd, but the people there were cheering. There was great anticipation. They were anxiously awaiting for what Jesus would do to end their struggles to end their oppression from Roman rule. But seeing Jesus riding on a lowly donkey instead of a, a gorgeous battle horse, that didn't cause them to, to maybe begin questioning Jesus' intention. They were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. But somehow, Somehow during the course of the week, things change. <clears throat> and the crowd moves from shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus is king, to crucify him. Crucify him. And so Jesus <clears throat> begins his last steps down the road to the cross. These last steps come after he has been beaten and tortured and ridiculed. And he is struggling with every step. His muscles are tired. His energy is drained. His, his nerves are fried. And and they make him carry his cross on his back himself. This huge piece of wood laid across his back that he drags up the road to Golgotha, to the hill where he will die. In this morbid parade, there are the other people who are going to be crucified. 
And there are the many, many soldiers who are there to make sure that the executions happen without a hitch. The bystanders, bystanders are, are lining the street and they're just watching in disbelief. Is this, is this the same man that we proclaimed as king less than a week ago? Is this the man who has healed so many? Is this the man who raised Lazarus from the dead? Is this the man who fed the multitude? So why, why doesn't he just rise up and escape? Why is he letting them do this to him? As Jesus makes his way down the road to where his cross will be placed, his strength just goes out. And the soldiers realize he needs help if he is going to survive until they get him to where they're going. So they grab one of the bystanders, a man named Simon, Simon from Cyrene, to help Jesus. Now, our Lenten series on the road to the cross has focused on some minor characters, some bit players on this journey. We've intentionally explored their stories in an effort to connect their stories with our stories. It's easy for us to feel like really minor characters in the story of the church. Like what we do doesn't make a difference in the grand scheme of things. So we are looking at these people who Jesus encountered along the way in this Easter story. And maybe we can be encouraged that even when we feel insignificant, we can know our story is important. And it truly does make a difference. So like the many other characters we've looked at during this series, we don't know much about Simon. In addition to Luke, he is mentioned in Matthew and Mark's Gospels. We know he was from Cyrene, which is an ancient city in the northeastern part of uh, Libya in Africa. We don't know why he's in Jerusalem, but since it is the time of Passover, and many Jewish people, if they were able, would make the pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. It makes sense that Simon was there to celebrate Passover. Passover is the time that the Jewish people celebrate God freeing them from captivity in Egypt. Numeriano Galgo reminds us that Cyrene was about 783 miles from Jerusalem. So if, if Simon made this trip on foot, it would have taken him approximately a month to make the trip there. I mean, that, that's a big commitment. A month traveling there, and then a month traveling back. But that, that's what the Jewish people of Jesus' day would do in this most sacred time of the year to pilgrimage to this most holy city. And the celebration would include visiting the temple, enjoying wonderful food and drink, and sharing the sacred stories. It's a once-in-a-lifetime trip. I imagine that, that Simon was much like us when we prepare and envision a vacation that we have been looking forward to for such a long time. 
We pack and then we repack our suitcases. We plan out all that we want to do, all of the sights that we want to see. We follow the map and we schedule all of our stops along the way. We awake with great anticipation on the day that we leave. And then once we arrive at our destination, we are just, just filled with excitement about our adventure. But if Simon was excited about his journey and looking forward to all he anticipated happening while he was in Jerusalem, Jesus' journey down the road to the cross was just the opposite, full of dread and horror and pain. And there Simon is in the middle of the Passover crowd, not sure exactly what is going on when the road is blocked as the parade of characters makes their way through all the bystanders on their way to Golgotha. I imagine, too, that, that Simon was surprised when he was plucked out of that crowd to join this parade, to carry someone else's cross, to help someone move closer and closer to their death. We don't know exactly how this experience affected Simon, but it makes sense. It makes sense that as he was carrying Jesus' cross, he got some of Jesus' blood on him. Blood that Jesus had transferred to the cross while he was carrying it that was then transferred to Simon. And for a devout Jew, that would make him unclean and therefore unable to go into the temple, unable to interact with others in the way that he had planned as part of his Passover celebration. He can't do what he came to Jerusalem to do. Instead, he had been tasked to participate in this horrible execution. So what can we learn from Simon and his interaction with Jesus on the road to the cross? First, there may be times when our plans, our ideas of what we need to be doing change, change into something that we may not want to do, but it's what God needs us to do in order to help others know God's love and God's mercy. Instead of going to the temple and celebrating Passover the way that he had intended, Simon ends up helping Jesus Christ accomplish his mission on earth, sacrificing himself in order to save the world from sin. We may make plans for our day, the errands that we are going to run, the items on our to-do list, all that we need to accomplish and then, and then our, we cross paths with someone in need. And our plans change. Because helping that person is more important than the task we had scheduled. But this idea can also apply to our ministries here at Main Street. It's easy to fall into the pattern of doing what we've always done. What we think other people need. What brings us joy. When we might need to evaluate what we are doing. So that it truly is what God is calling us to do here at Main Street 
in Bedford in 2022. Maybe we need to be doing something different. The second thing I think we can learn is that we don't have to carry our crosses alone. There are times in our lives when we will just be tired. We will be worn down. And we will be struggling to take that next faithful step. That is when the community of faith steps up and helps carry the load. We help one another. We keep a lookout for people who are having a hard time and we step up to help them in whatever way we can to carry their cross, even if only for a little while. And when we are the ones in need of help, we accept the help that others offer and willingly let them carry the load for a while so that we can rest and recover and therefore are ready then to complete whatever task God is calling us to do. That's one of the reasons why I think it is so important to be part, to be an active part of a community of faith. And I'm so glad that Main Street understands this concept and cares for one another in so many different ways. Friends, I, I pray this Palm Sunday, as we remember the joyous parade with Jesus riding in on a donkey and people waving their palm branches, as we remember this week and the devastating events that happened and that other parade that Jesus made, made to endure on Good Friday, we will also remember that we are not bystanders when it comes to living a life with Christ. We, we, like Simon, are called to participate, called to do our part, to help carry the load, to do what we can so that God's kingdom will come on earth. So I leave you with this question. How are you being called to change your plans? To do something maybe you don't want to do, but is what God needs you to do right now in this time and place. How are you being called to be more than a bystander. Amen.
be a participant in the faith, not a bystander. Go out and help carry the cross. Go in the name of